All right, subscribers, welcome back to another episode of Science with Serbac. Today, what we are going to be talking about is section 16.4 in our Intro to Chem and Physics class. And this is a continuation talking about some of those properties that occur with light. So before we get into the details of this particular section, I just want to outline a few objectives that I have for you to be able to accomplish by the end of this video. Number one, determine what happens when light or to light when it passes from one medium to another. Uh, objective number three is determine what happens to light when it passes through a lens. And then objective number three here, the final objective, is determine what happens when light goes through a prism and separates white light into those different colors. So we get starting here, or we get started here with the bending of light. And so it's important to remember this. Light waves bend or refract when they pass from one transparent medium to another. Now, a good example of passing from one transparent medium to another is when something like light passes through air into water. Now, this transparent medium does not have to be colorless. Last section, we talked about those colored filters, and light can pass through uh, one colored filter to another. It just has to be transparent. It just has to allow light to go through it. Now, it's also too important to remember in this point here that the speed of light changes when it passes through different mediums which cause that light to bend. So to explain what is happening here, I have this picture. And the best way to explain this is the first picture here on the left where you see the stream of light coming from air and getting bent or getting refracted as it hits this liquid, this clear liquid in this container. And what happens here, you would expect it if, if this light was continuing to go through that air, that it would move at that same angle. But when it hits the other medium, you can see, you can see that it is going to, it is going to bend a little bit different. It's not going to continue in that straight pattern. Now, we will talk about these two pictures here, but you can see that the light rays, when we pass through different medium, is going to bend a little bit differently. And so that, that's the next uh, point here, is that light waves that meet a boundary of two different mediums at an angle will cause that light to change direction. So now that we have that in mind, we need to talk about these last two pictures that I showed you earlier about how, how light, how it's bent one way going from one medium to another and it's bent away in this other type of scenario here. So again, those are two different scenarios. And so what is happening is this. The first one that we're gonna talk about is light being bent toward the normal. So the first thing to understand is that when light is bent toward the normal, what happens is that this, is, this is, has to occur when light moves from a material or medium in which the speed is high to a material in which speed is low. Now remember, that light travels fastest through a gas medium like air and travels slowest through a solid medium um, that has those particles really close together. So a good example of light bending toward the normal is when light passes through air and it enters into water. And so when that happens here, what happens is this middle picture, you can see light coming in, it is bent at an angle towards the normal. 
So again, an example of this for first bending of light towards the normal is going to be light moving through air and into water. Now our other option here is when light is bent away from the normal. So light bending away from the normal is just the opposite of what we talked about up here. And to show you that example here, I have this picture. Now we have on the right hand side here, light bending away from the normal. So specifically this light bending away from the normal is going to occur when light moves from a material in which speed is low to one in which that material is higher. And we're talking about the speed there. And again, we're talking about the speed of light. So it's going from low to high speed. So a, a great example of this is light moving through water into air. Now in notes, I did provide you with a section that separates out this business of bending away and towards the normal. So on that next page of notes, and I'm gonna show you uh, this page right here, um, you can insert the information starting from right here where my, my finger is. That's where that was supposed to go. I just squeezed it into one page. So what we're going to do, I'm going to skip over the next page because that info, light bent towards the normal and light bent away from the normal, was put on this first page. Again, you can transfer it or if you haven't written it down yet, you can put it on this particular page. But now we can transition to images of refracted light. So I'm gonna skip that page again because I squeezed all of that info on one page. And we can get to our images of refracted light. So something to keep in mind is this, all images from a refracted light create virtual images. So we have two different examples here that are going to utilize these two pictures. And so when this happens, and we, let's try to get this to focus, there we go. Um, when this happens, the first thing here is that we have uh, an object or we're looking at an object in water from surface. So let's pretend this is a cat on a pedestal or a pier, and it's peering into this water where that fish is. So that's our, our first example. So the best way to explain this is looking back at this image, and it's gonna be this first image up top here. And what happens here is this, the light rays, that are coming from the fish in the water are going to be bent away from the normal. Again, this is going from speeds that are slower, the, the water, to speeds that are faster. So what happens here is that the fish, this virtual image, that's what that uh, light silhouette's trying to indicate there, fish, because it's going from water to air, the light rays are, is bent away from the normal. And so when that happens, again, back to this image here, again, what happens is that the virtual image, which is this light silhouette of the fish, it's actually going to appear closer and it's appearing closer to the surface. And again, that's because the image is produced, originated from the water and then it goes through that surface and into the air, and then eventually the cat sees it. So that's why it appears closer. So now what we can talk about is that bottom picture here, and this bottom picture that I've shown you is going to happen when we look at an object on the surface from water. So in this case here, we're pretending that we are the fish and we're getting that object that is in air, which is a faster moving medium for light, and that light is going to pass through the water, and that is going to be a slower moving medium. So 
our, our example again is light rays looking at an object or looking at an object from the uh, surface from water. So put yourself in the shoes, or I guess the fins of the fish in this case. And so if we are pretending to be the fish here, we are getting an image that is moving faster in air and hitting the surface of the water and causing a, uh, a refraction to occur in that light. And so what specifically happens here is that light rays are going to pass from the air into water and cause the light to be bent toward the normal. And this again is happening because the image which originates on top of this pier occurs in air and the image moves through air, which is the faster medium, through the water to the slower medium. And so what specifically is happening here is that the objects in this picture here, the bottom picture that is, is making the uh, items on surface appear to be further away than they actually are. So again, I just wanna show you that picture one more time here of this bottom portion. This silhouette here is what the fish perceives as the actual image, all because it goes, the, the light rays go from a faster moving medium, the air, to the slower medi medium, which is that water. All right, so now we can transition and we can start to talk about these items known as mirages. So we've probably all heard of mirages, but just in case you haven't, I do have an example of a mirage. So our example here is this. This is a blacktop out here in a, looks like a, a desert. And so what happens is the sun's out and what we get is what, what actually looks like a mirrored image from that sun. Now that blacktop is not a mirror. It wouldn't make sense to drive on a mirror, at least not too much sense. Um, but that, that image that looks like a mirror and that's reflecting what's on the surface is known as a mirage. Now, specifically, if we wanna go through the formal definition of a mirage, it is this. It is defined as a virtual image that is caused by refraction of light in the atmosphere. Now, you may notice mirages appear more often when the temperature is hotter. Uh, and a lot of times the temperature is hotter because the, the sun's out. So it's not to say that this can't happen in the winter time, uh, but it's more likely to occur in the summertime, number one, because the sun's out. So the air temperature does have an effect on light. The first effect that air temperature has on light is this. As light from Earth's atmosphere passes into a layer of hot air just above Earth's surface, it refracts and bends upward away from the Earth's surface. So again, to, to focus this, what happens? Air passes uh, through Earth's atmosphere and right before it hits the surface, it's going to refract back up. Now, as this happened, the refraction of light create a virtual images of the sky. So again, to take a look at that picture just one more time, we see that mirrored image because we are getting a virtual image of the sky. And that's why it looks, this hot black top here, looks like a mirrored surface. So now that we, we've talked about mirages, what we can do is we can move into our principles of lenses. So as we transition here to the principle of lenses, there's some important things that we need to know about lenses. Number one, when we start talking about lenses, we 
are looking at these two things. So notice how they are clear and transparent. And our first main principle of lenses is this. Light is going to pass through a thin, flat medium that is refracted twice. The first refraction through a lens occurs as it enters the medium. And then that second refraction occurs as it re-enters into that air. So if we look at that picture again of a lens, it's going to be refracted once as it enters each of these lenses. And then as it goes through the lens, it's going to be refracted once again as it exits it on, in this case, the right hand side. So the other thing that happens is, is this. There are actually two things that are happening as the light ray passes through a thin flat medium. The first thing that happens is the position of the light ray that exits the medium is shifted. So what we're talking about here is that as it, it goes through the medium, you can see this slight break in this light ray and that's what we're talking about is that shift. Now, the other thing that happens is this, that light ray is still going to be a, a parallel to the original ray. So yes, there is a break in that action there, but it's going to be parallel to that original ray at that time period. And so this brings us down to actually talking about lenses in itself. So the next thing that we're going to discuss on this section of notes is the actual lenses. So lenses are defined as a transparent object that refracts light waves as or such that they converge or diverge to create an image. So as we saw in this picture here, uh, as light rays pass through a lens, what's going to happen is that the light rays are going to change direction. They're, they're going to be refracted into those different directions. So when they change directions, those light rays are no longer going to be parallel to that original ray. Again, I, I squished this in here, but it says rays no longer parallel to the original ray. And just to give you an idea here, here is what an actual lens looks like. So right here, this is a, um, this right here is a diverging lens the light rays diverge outward and it has almost like a concave mirror. So this is a diverging uh, lens. And then over here, what I have is a uh, converging lens. Now with this converging lens, you can see that what I've written down here gets a lot larger, whereas a diverging lens, everything that I've written is, is getting a lot smaller. And that's some of the properties of these lenses. So as we shift gears here, as we shift gears here to talk about the different types of lenses, we have to keep in mind this. Each light ray strikes a lens at a slightly different angle, causing angles of the ray to be bent in different directions. So now that we have that point in mind, we can talk a little bit more in depth and in detail of a converging and a diverging lens. So number one here, our converging lens is going to bend light inward. And because it's bending light inward, it can create a virtual or real image. Now, the type of image depends upon the distance the object is away from the lens. So there's a couple of things I want to show you on a converging lens. Number one, if I put the converging lens, you can see that my text here is magnified. Now, if I show you this picture here, 
of a converging lens, you can see that the focal point goes through and it comes together. And so the reason that we can get either a real or virtual image is because that focal point comes together. So now we can shift gears and talk about a diverging lens. Now a diverging lens is going to bend light outward. And because light is bent outward, it is only going to create a virtual image. Now again, I wanna show you two things. The actual diverging lens, you can see it makes the text significantly smaller. And the reason why it only creates a virtual image is this. If you look at this picture, look at those light rays. After they pass through this diverging lens, they are never going to come back together and get to that focal point and that causes this lens not to produce a real image. The only thing it can produce is a virtual image. So with that in mind, we can go over a little bit more in depth and in detail of magnification. So magnification is defined as the increase of an object's apparent size by using lenses or mirrors. So that brings us to the topic of a magnifying glass. Now, in case you haven't seen a magnifying glass, I have one here and it's going to enlarge. You can see my text here is enlarged from this magnifying glass. And now a magnifying glass by definition is just going to use convergent lenses to enlarge the size of the object. Now to magnify or what the magnifying glass actually does is it's going to create a virtual image to enlarge whatever object is underneath that magnifying glass. Now, because magnifying glass or a magnifying glass uses a convergent lens, there is a focal point that is reached with this magnifying lens. So remember, it is using a converging lens and the focal point by definition is a small area in which light waves of a uh, convergent lens actually come together or converge together. And this focal point is achievable or it does get achieved in all magnification devices. So one type of magnification device that we use in science is that of microscopes. So a microscope uh, looks like this and what it is going to do, I'll zoom in a little bit for this picture, what it is going to do is it's going to use multiple lenses to magnify an object. The first type of lens that it uses is an objective lens. And if you look real close here, the objective lenses are these pieces right here on the end where my, my finger is. So what an object lens does is it's going to be closest to the object and it's going to form a large real image of the object. The second type of lens used in a microscope is known as an eyepiece. And that eyepiece is right there at the top and it's right where you would put your eye to look through this particular uh, microscope. Now what an eyepiece does is it's going to act as a magnifying glass which creates a larger virtual image of the object. Now, it's important also to understand how light goes through the human eye and how we see things through our eyes. So we shift gears here and we look at light, what happens with light as it enters the human eye. And I wanna give you a picture of the human eye here. And we have multiple things happening. So what we're going to do, we're gonna go through this picture here as light goes from just outside the eye to eventually how your brain picks up on the eye. And these are all the components of the eye. So the first thing that light does is, is going to enter the eye through the cornea. Now the cornea 
is composed of transparent tissue and it causes nearly 70% of refraction to occur in light or for light that it enters into the eye. The second thing that happens is once through the cornea, the light is going to go through the pupil and then through the lens of the eye. So to give you an idea of what's happening, light entered, it traveled through the beginning parts or the outside part of the eye. It went through the cornea, through this pupil, and it's now on this lens, which is uh, uh, just like the lenses we talked about. Now, the lenses in eyes is or are composed of fibers. They have a curvature of the lens, which is going to determine how much the lens refracts light. And the lens uh, has muscles around it that can adjust the curvature until an image is focused on the retina. Now, where we have gone now is now the uh, light is focused on the retina here, which, let me pull the picture up, the retina is here, the back of the eye, and that retina is composed of light sensitive items called rods and cones. And so what happens once light is struck on these rods and cones, they are going to send a signal to the brain that is eventually interpreted as images. Now, I have a, a little space here uh, to talk about rods versus cones. So over here, what I'm gonna talk about is our cones, and the cones are going to be in the center of the retina. They are responsible for color vision, and then cones only respond to bright lights. Now rods on the other hand are on the outer edges of the retina. And I'm out of room here so I'm not going to squeeze this onto one page here but our rods again are on the outer edge of the retina and so I'm just going to shift pages here. The rods are on the outer edge of uh, the retina. Whoop, and I, I spelled that wrong, it's no E. It is just rods with an S. And the other thing is that they are sensitive to dim light and they uh, do not resolve details uh, well. Uh, they allow you to see some faint movements out of the corner of your eye, uh, but they do not resolve details well. So again, this business on rods, uh, I ran out of room here, but it should have went under the business of light on the retina. So that is the basics of how uh, light works in the human eye. Now that we know this, we're going to make uh, a pretty significant shift here. We're still talking about light and how it's refracted, but we're going to talk about prisms. So with prisms, these things are just defined as this. Uh, first off, they deal with optics, but it is a system that consists of two or more plane surfaces of a transparent solid at an angle with each other. And so a prism, uh, it looks like this. I showed you a picture of this in section three. And a prism, what happens here is this. They can separate the colors of light because the speed of light waves traveling through the medium are going to be dependent on the wavelengths of light. Now it's important to remember that the speed of light is dependent upon that wavelength. So we get down here to this other topic here which is specifically the speed of light. Number one here with the speed of light is that through a medium the speed depends on the wavelength. And the longer the wavelength, the faster uh, a light wave travels here. 
So a good example of this is red light. Red light has the longest wavelength, which means it is the fastest visible light. And violet light is going to have a shorter wavelength, which means it has a, a slower or it's the slowest visible light. All right, so now that we know a little bit about the prism, a little bit more details that is, we can shift gears and we can talk about dispersion. Now, dispersion is just defined as the process of separating a wave, such as white light, or of different frequencies into its individual component waves, or the different colors in terms of white light. And so this dispersion occurs because the wavelengths of visible light varies and bends at different angles when they pass through something like a prism. And an example of this is sunlight passing through a prism. And we've already wrote down a lot of details, so I'm just going to verbally go over what happens here. So remember, in a prism, sunlight is going to be separated into all visible lights. It shows a rainbow. And then all visible light travels at different sp speeds, so it's going to bend differently in that prism, and that violet light travels slower than red light. So violet light, what happens to that is it bends more than red light. Now, the difference in speed is the amount light is bent causes the dispersion in light. So different speed leads to different amount uh, bent, which causes that dispersion. Our last topic that we will uh, very briefly go over is this topic of rainbows. And, and we've all seen rainbows or heard about rainbows, but what it is is this. Sunlight strikes a water droplet in Earth's atmosphere. And so, uh, real similar to a prism, and, and water droplets, I'll back up there, water droplets are things like water vapor, so clouds. Um, real similar to a prism. And so, what happens here is that light can be dispersed into different and pass through the water droplet. Or as light it passes through a water droplet, it's dispersed into different colors. So, if uh, a light ray uh, is reflected, it can be reflected by the water droplet at an angle of refraction that is small enough, uh, we can get some unique things happening. So number one, uh, light that is refracted between 40 and 42 degrees produces a variety of colors. So again, uh, the specific refraction that occurs out of light that goes through a water droplet in Earth's atmosphere, if it's refracted between 40 degrees and 42 degrees, we get some unique things. Number one, at 40 degrees, this is the angle violet light emerges. And at 42 degrees, this is the angle that red light emerges. Now, between 40 and 42, you get all visible light, or all light contained within the visible spectrum. Now, the light that is refracted out of this water droplet is going to be seen as arcs of color. And so, these arcs of colors here, if you look, uh, produce that rainbow shape. Now, something that's unique to this is that only red and violet light that is refracted from the water droplet reach our eye. All other colors of the rainbow are separated in space. So there's a lot of science actually behind rainbows and a lot of things that we've talked about specifically with light is seen here. Now, this is the final portion of section 16.4. I hope you have enjoyed the video. And as always, remember to subscribe.